Greetings, Metanistas. Every so often in life, one's dreams do actually come true. And when I was watching the draw for this year's Champions League, there was one team in particular I wanted Manchester City to draw, and my dream did indeed come true. And um, yes, you've guessed it, we've drawn Sevilla. Not only drawn them, but we've got them in the first match, which is away from home. So join me for what should be a belter of a vlog for the game between Sevilla and Manchester City in the 2022-23 Champions League. As it happens, I was actually in Seville as recently as two weeks ago and many of you who watch my channel regularly will know not only is there going to be a food component of this video but also that I really love the district on the other side of the river, the river Guadalquivir called Triana and a few weeks ago, which was in August, a lot of the places I wanted to go to were actually closed but good news Matanistas, they're open now. So we're going to start off at a favourite of mine called Las Golondrinas. It's a very small tapas bar and they do have other establishments in the city. What I love about this place, which I think is their original place, I'm not sure about that, is that it's a typical civilian tapas bar where you stand and you take your tapas with wine, sherry, beer or whatever else you fancy. Once inside, I settled for a Manzanilla Sherry, the second most dry type, and some water. Because in the heat of Seville, if you don't drink your water and you're out drinking before a match all day, you're going to be in a bit of a pickle by the end of it. Anyway, drinking sherry is traditional with tapas here, so I've stuck with tradition as always, standing at the bar and having a slurp of a delicious ice-cold sherry. And as you can see, the prices are very, very reasonable. You don't break the bank eating tapas in Seville. And we have mushrooms, and I'm not quite sure what's on top of them. They're cooked a la plancha, which means on a hot, flat iron skillet. And now we have squid, grilled squid, and what they call green sauce, but that is definitely a pesto preparation. Ah, that felt good. Now, whilst they do have seating available in that little place, and they have an upstairs which is, I think, seated, I prefer to do it the traditional way, the civilian way, and stand and take my tapas, and many others do too. Okay, next up, Milton Easters, a place that I featured before, a wine shop come restaurant, which was closed last time I was here, but when I was last able to eat here, it basically served me up my favourite dish of the summer, the green tomato gazpacho with tartar of prawns. Now they don't have that on the menu today, but they do have some interesting stuff. So let's head over and dig in. And to drink, I'm starting off with a Ribeiro white wine. It's produced in the northwest of Spain, in Galicia, just above the Portuguese border. And Galicia does, in my opinion, produce the best white wines in Spain, Albariño and this. So the first dish has arrived from Atenistas, and you will not be at all surprised to see mutton's gone raw again. And we have a dish that was described as carpaccio viche of langostinos. So it's langostin carpaccio, yes, raw langostines, but I'm not exactly sure what the sauce or soup is on top of the langostin. Quick closer. Oh yeah. 
I'm still unsure as to what that sauce actually is, but the dish in itself is absolutely delicious. Slightly sharp and vinegary, but the quite exquisite taste of those raw langoustines is shining through. And we got some of that Japanese seaweed, I've forgotten what it's called. Quite possibly the dish of the day, and highly slurp worthy. And I did make an inquiry actually about the sauce and I found out it's like a tiger's milk that you serve on top of ceviche, so a ceviche type sauce, hence the sharpness. And when I think about it, the name does suggest that it's a fusion between a Spanish tartare and a Peruvian ceviche. Okay, next dish has arrived and it is, it's an egg cooked at low temperature. And it does appear to have been cooked with black pudding or morcilla or blood sausage rather than black pudding. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Egg dishes I don't normally order but when you see this sort of creation you've got to go for it. And it has to be said, low temperature cooked eggs are something you often see on very fancy menus in expensive restaurants, often Michelin starred ones. And here we are getting a tapper of this dish for four euros fifty. Definitely worth a slurp, that is. Mm. And as we delve deeper down Matanistas, more treasures, some mashed potato. And I've paired this with a Mencia, a Galician red wine. Now Galicia is famous for its white wines normally, but they've made leaps and bounds and great strides in producing great reds as well. They're medium body, not as heavy as a Toro or a Ribeiro, but with an egg dish, I think it's about right. Served, of course, in Spain from a wine fridge at the perfect temperature. And now the last dish, another little tapa, Entraña, which is flank steak. Very popular in Argentina, but you don't see it so often in Spain. Yes, they have some better cuts, some great cuts, but for a little tapa, this is interesting. And as you can see, it's cooked medium. It's not really a cut to be cooked rare. And it's smothered in one of my favorite sauces, chimichurri. And for those who don't know, chimichurri is a spicy herb, olive oil, chili, steak sauce used mainly in Argentina to go with red meat. Very juicy, nice piece of meat. So there you go, it's a wonder what you can do with the less fashionable cuts of meat if you cook them well. Anyway, another quick slurp. And I will get on with this and talk to you in a bit. Okay, Matanistas, great lunch, taken between the hours of two and four, traditional Spanish lunchtime. I'm all fed and watered, I can declare myself match fit, so let's head off to the centre of Seville and talk some football. Time for a refreshment and a chat about the match. I've come to the Plaza Alfalfa, which is a pleasant little square full of little bars and restaurants in the centre of the city, just above the cathedral. And one thing I do like about some of the bars in Seville and other hot parts of Spain is the vapour that gets pumped out from the canopies to keep the customers cool. Ah. That's better. Now, if you're wondering why I'm drinking a small beer as opposed to a pint or half a litre, it's because in a country, and in particular in a city, as hot as this, the beer can get warm pretty quickly. So it's best to put the testosterone to one side and have little ones. And the small beers are called cañas. Very easy to order. And if you're wondering also why I'm not in some bar seething with city fans shouting, singing, drinking, it's because A, I don't know where they are, and B, I had a little siesta to recharge myself and to recharge my camera's battery. So I'll be going solo until we get to the stadium. Now as for the football itself, going into this game, City are on reasonable form, although a little hiccup against Aston Villa at the weekend, but a lot of the play was good, particularly for a 20 minute spell in the second half, but they should have killed off the game and we didn't. As for Seville, they have managed one point so far from four games and lost 3-0 at home to Barcelona in their last one, so I think there's a lot of room for optimism that City can get their campaign off to a great start with a comfortable away win tonight. 
that. And that is exactly what I'm expecting. As long as we can avoid those sloppy patches, which we've had in all three of our most recent games, I think we'll be all right. I'm stand corrected, three of our last four games, because against Forest it was one-way traffic. Anyway, the team news is out, and some surprises here, because Stones, I don't know if he's picked up an injury or whatever, but he is not even on the bench today. So our new defender, Akanji, who we bought from Dortmund just before deadline day, makes a debut. Kyle Walker's absent, I think he picked up an injury in the Villa game, and Cancelo will move over to right back. And our new left back, Sergio Gomez, will make his Champions League debut for City. Otherwise, pretty much as expected up front, with Haaland leading the attack. And some familiar faces in the Sevilla lineup. Jesus Navas, who used to play for City, he seems to have been converted into a right back, forgive me if I'm wrong there. Uh, even Rakitic used to play for Barcelona, and Isco, who nearly ended up moving to City, stayed at Real Madrid but has now ended up at Sevilla. So there should be too much in our lineup, too much firepower for them to deal with. I'm going for a 3 1 win to City tonight. Obviously, my predictions are rarely correct, but as I said earlier, I'm confident as long as we don't take our eye off the ball, we'll be all right tonight. Come on, City. And another change which is quite noteworthy, which I forgot, is that Jack Grealish is back. Now, I thought he had a longer-term injury than stated, but he's back for Ilkay Gundogan, who is often needed when he comes off the bench because we're behind. But let's hope that's not the case tonight. Anyway, I'm going to finish off my beer and head off to the stadium. Well, one of the quickest and most efficient security checks I've ever had at a railway gate. None of this walking a mile to get through some special entrance where we get cordoned off, put through 10 or 20 checks. There was the usual pat down ticket check and, rather usually, a sniffer dog, but maybe that sped things up a bit. Anyway, game's about to kick off, better get to my seat. Here we go, pretty lively home crowd here. And there's no roofing to the stadium, but the good news is it virtually never rains here anyway. Um, not the best segregation I've ever seen here either. so far but I've noticed at the other end that there seem to be puddles have they overwatered the pit some of the passes are only just making their destination <laughs>
Well, again, something that seems to happen a lot in Spain. No added time whatsoever. Anyway, comfortable half for City, but only 1-0. We don't want to let them off the hook like we did Villa last weekend. But Seville don't look very dangerous when they're attacking. So, I'm, again, pretty confident that we'll see this one through. <laughs> seemed to be an eternity and eventually got a shot away into the corner. 2-0 City, I really can't see Sevilla coming back from two down. Hardly a check for that, we're at the other end of the pitch, no idea who was offside when. over before it is now and I'm not sure actually why Haaland wasn't put in earlier by Foden and Gundogan who between them could have set him free. Anyway, it didn't matter. Keeper made a save, came back and the man was never going to miss. 3-0 City. Oh, just, just, just. City in stoppage time. Mares did something useful for one, played for the overlap by Cancelo, who played a delicious cross, and there was none other than surprisingly Ruben Diaz to poke it in. going on there, are they uh, 
protesting about their team or are they saluting them? Who knows? Well, there's enough whistling to suggest it's the former. And of course, as always away in Europe, we get held back for anything from 40 minutes to nearly two hours sometimes. I doubt it'll be as long as that this time, but it would help if the home supporters actually started going. So, that was a very, very short hold back. 20 minutes, that's the shortest I think I can remember ever having in Europe. And it was a half hour walk away from the stadium. So I'm back in the centre of town, and one of the joys of being in Seville is that you can get your dinner at midnight if you so wish, and I certainly do wish. Well, as for the game itself, I don't know what to say really. I mean, City didn't really get out of first gear. I thought Seville were actually quite dire. They're pretty awful. My first dish has arrived, so we'll go back to the football after I've shown you what I'm having. And after a hot day in Seville, what better than a bowl of salmorejo? It's a dish that's actually from Cordoba. It's a popular thick tomato soup, cold of course. And the difference between gazpacho and salmorejo is that salmorejo only uses tomatoes. Oh, that's beautiful. Anyway, back to the football. And obviously the first goal really killed Seville. Great ball in again from De Bruyne to Haaland. What a partnership those two are forming. Sevilla had the odd moment, but after that it was only a matter of time before the second came and there was no coming back for Sevilla once City scored a second. Foden seemed to take an eternity after some great work down the right to actually get a shot away. He eventually did. And then for the third, I actually think Foden should have passed to Haaland and it's only because the goalkeeper couldn't hold the ball that Haaland ended up scoring. Anyway, it doesn't matter really because we were winning the game anyway and we were able to field some of the younger players, put Maras on, but that cross from Cancelo was delicious to Diaz for the fourth goal. I have to say the worries as usual, Grealish and Maras, they really didn't contribute much at all. Maras at least got the assist to the assist when he fed Cancelo in at the end, but Grealish absolutely nothing. He got into some great positions. He could never find a decent cross. Anyway, my main has arrived, and it is a fillet steak. It's actually something I don't order very often, but I fancied a piece of meat without it being too huge. And, as always in Spain, look how that is cooked beautifully rare. What a great piece of meat that is, and beautifully seasoned and prepared. And fillet steak is not just fillet steak. You'd be surprised by how many restaurant chefs actually can't cook it properly. As for Sevilla, good heavens, what a mess they're in. One point of four games, thrashing in the first Champions League, and some of their play really was very poor. It wouldn't surprise me if the manager, Mr Lopetegui, does not have very long left to go before he gets sacked. So I'm going to wrap the video up here. A routine win for City, a very good one. Another one against Dortmund next week, and we'll be thoroughly and totally in control of the group. Apart from the continuing issues with Grealish and Mahrez, everybody else put in good solid performances without being outstanding, but they didn't need to be. It was a professional job, well done. I won't be covering the Tottenham game, I have other things I have to do unfortunately, so the next vlog will be that home game against Dortmund next Wednesday. I'll see you at that next game. I'm going to spend a few more days enjoying what Seville has to offer. I did say it was a dream draw and I'm going to have a whale of a time in those few days. And in the meantime, don't forget to keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing, and most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.